It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with PG and Ten. All right, welcome into episode 156 of The Border War. This is BG. I am in studio with the Tan Man. Um, Tan Man, I'm going to skip all the Twitter stuff. We've gone through this 738 times. Everybody knows how to follow us. It's easy to find. Let's get started. Um, Last week, a little bit weird. I did literally couldn't even find one day when I could sit down in my house and do uh, a show on my own to, to sort of match yours. So I guess all we got last week was... North Carolina basketball. Something tells me you don't want to spend a long time talking about that today. Interesting um, enough, that drew as many, almost as many uh, plays as some of the things we do together. I don't know what that says, but it is what it is. Oh, don't pout. I mean, I'm not pouting. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just making a I'm point. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just making a point that, uh, you know, a lot of interest about uh, North Carolina basketball is out there. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yay. So, come on, man. You intro on the show? What are we doing? All right. Well, I mean, I don't know. I can't. I, can't, I took my glasses off, so I can't see all what right, it says now. You're, you're clearly not qualified for this. Look, last time uh, last time we, we got together in the studio, in this room, uh, I don't think the the college football playoff had been solidified. Uh, it is now. Uh, the four teams, of course, you all know them: LSU, uh, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma. I don't think any real big surprises here, right? No, the, these were kind of where we figured they'd wind up. I mean, we, you know, there was a little bit of drama, I guess, surrounding that fourth spot. And historically speaking, the fourth spot itself isn't worth having any drama over. Um, but no, I mean, I think they got it right. Yeah, I think. I, think, I mean, I think you could make an argument about a seating here or there, but um, the four teams definitely were the four I would have put in. Yeah, I think by Friday night when when Utah had pretty much uh, that, gotten their their butts handed yeah. to them, I think that pretty much ended the any kind of debate. We knew that uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, the Big 12 champion was probably, knowing the, the issues that Georgia was having with injuries and suspensions and the fact that they probably, let's face it, they're just not as good as LSU, that that winner of the Big 12 game was going to wind up being the fourth team. And, That's what and it wound up being. Once again, it kind of begs the question of, uh, if this phrase power five is actually correct. I think we really might be down to the power four. Uh, yeah. I mean, that just. Yeah, no. But, but I'll tell you, I, I really start to wonder how much of it is literally just exposure. I mean, because, like you said, no, no one's watching that stuff. Not this year. Mm-hmm. Not this year. I mean, because obviously Utah was the team that had a crack at it. and Or you could say Oregon had a crack at it earlier in the season. Right. And, and they both blew it. Um, but, uh, I mean. Yeah, if you're the Pac 12 at this point, like, wait. Yeah. Like it was there for you. Yeah, you you had kind of backdoored your way it into was. that situation anyway. It was there for you. And you know the people at the Pac-12 offices are sitting there watching that championship game just going, you got to be freaking kidding me, right. man. It, it, it felt like, you know, that this year at least, that the, the committee didn't really want to put Oklahoma into the playoffs. I don't um, think they did. But here we are. Yeah. Now the, Utah had left them no choice, so BG – uh, we'll start off, we'll talk a little bit about these matchups because let's look, this is probably going to be the last time we're on the air before uh, before these things take place. So the first one, uh, early on in the day, on the 28th of December, you got Oklahoma and LSU. Uh, BG, call me crazy. Talk, talk me off this ledge. Uh, I'm not writing the Sooners off in this one. No, now, I know. I agree with you. I know LSU is the the SEC champion, an undefeated SEC champion, is always given the benefit of the doubt. I think that that's probably what propelled them to number one. But that's a different different discussion here in a few minutes. But Oklahoma is a team that literally they they had like they had like a bad two quarters, and they kind of played and eh, maybe another game. And other than that, look, Oklahoma. Yeah, they, they've been the real deal, man. Listen, sure. they have lived up to basically every expectation you had of before uh, the, the season started. And for some reason, I just feel like this Oklahoma team has not gotten a ton of respect. If, if you look, too, at LSU and where their offense and their defense ranks nationally, 
Um, and I and I know we've got a fairly small sample size uh, in in playoff years. This being what the sixth one, mm-hmm. um, but LSU really doesn't resemble any of the past national title winners um, from a, from the stance of, of their offensive output and their defensive output. I mean, they've got they've got an explosive offense at times. Their defense. Hmm. And, and, and that's why I think this is going to be uh, possibly a shootout because I think Oklahoma can score points against this LSU defense, particularly their secondary. Uh, and, and, and I certainly don't think it hurts <laughs> that you've got a quarterback um, that's seen this. I mean, it, look, Jalen Hurts uh, isn't going to be feeling one ounce of nervousness before this game. He has nothing to prove um, if he goes out and – and plays a bad game, well, then that's what will happen. But, I mean, it, you know, he he's exactly where he wanted to be and, and the reason he went there. And, I, and I'm, I'm with you, man. I just – I don't think against this defense, I wouldn't count Lincoln Riley and Jalen Hurts out against anybody right now. Um, so, I, I'm with you. I think this could be a high-scoring game. And, and if it is, I think Oklahoma's going to be right there because – um, like I said, I've got I've, I've got some questions about LSU. I mean, I I know that sounds crazy. Well, but but we're probably both wrong, and this will probably go the way that this one versus four matchup goes every year. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it's it's definitely an interesting game. I mean, I don't I don't feel the way about this that I felt with you know Michigan State going up against oh, no. Alabama oh, a few no, years no. back. Um, there's nothing conventional about Oklahoma. They're not going to be easy to just scheme for and, and play kind of a standard. We can out talent you. Our guys are going to beat you at the line. I think I think Lincoln Riley with this much time is going to is going to give that LSU defense all they want. Uh, typically, LSU has been built on the backs of the defense, sure. right? They, uh, they DBU, whatever you want to call them. They they've always been a defense first team and an offense that if they could do just enough, they could be really dangerous. And Oklahoma has always been, the last few years at least, they would, you know, seem like they were pretty comfortable winning the game 66 to 58. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. This year with both of these teams, I don't think that that's really the case with either one of them. But clearly, right. LSU is, is, listen, it's it's the Joe Burrow show down there. You, know, you look up the last few games, if Arkansas can score 20 on them, then, you know, certainly Oklahoma is going to be able to hang up. You know, plenty of points to stay in the game. Vice versa, you look at Oklahoma, you know, defensively, it seemed like every week the last couple of years they give up 45, 55, 60. Uh, you know, you look at some of these scores recently. They, you know, uh, Baylor jumped on them early. I think they held Baylor to three points in the second half of the first game. Uh, 23 points in an overtime contest in between there. You know, you're at on the road at Oklahoma State to finish out the regular season. Uh, you held them to 16. Look, this Oklahoma defense, we said or kind of at the beginning of the year, look, if this defense can do just not be awful, they can just don't be terrible, they're going to be able to offensively find their way into winning an awful lot of ball games, and here we are. So I think that uh, – I believe that this is going to be a game that comes down to literally who has the ball last because I'm not sure that either one of these two defenses is going to do a lot of stopping of the other one. Right. So, uh, with that said, look, it's hard to it's hard to bet against Joe Burrow. It's also point. hard to pick the one seed over the four seed. Yeah. In in this playoff, as, and in the way these things have gone, as much as I would love to see Jalen Hurts kind of do the whole you know one eighty reclamation kind of cast off to the right. side from Alabama story. Listen, man, Joe Burrow. It, it, this seems like it's his year, and. I, that I one, think, I'm going to go LSU in a in a in a razor razor thin one here. I actually think this is one of those games where I, I'm going to say LSU wins this by about nine points, but we're going to be saying it was way closer than nine yeah. points. Yeah, um, where, where where you have maybe just a mental lapse. I, I'm not sure, but then again, you know there are guys still on this Oklahoma team that have been in this situation. No one on LSU's roster has. That's a good, point. but. Good point. They have gone into Alabama and, and beaten them at Bryant Denny. So I don't know that. To be honest with you, I don't know this game 
can have any more pressure than a road game. And and it turns out, I mean, that was a playoff game. And I think both yeah. those teams knew it. Yeah. You know, that was a playoff game. I mean, obviously, knowing what we know now, Alabama had more pressure on them, but they didn't at the time mm. because we didn't know that they were going to lose their quarterback. That we didn't know they were going to lose to Auburn. Um, I mean, I think at, th- at that point in the in the season, I think you would argue back in November that LSU had the pressure on them, right? Because if they lose that game at Alabama, then you know what the narrative becomes. Okay. Uh, there's your way it was oh, wrong again. LSU yeah. back to where we thought they were. Let's put them back on the shelf. Second place forever. Uh-huh. Um, so I think this LSU team's pretty battle-tested given that. But uh, – I don't know, man. I hope you're right. I hope it's uh, – the playoff could use some good first-round games. Listen, I think this is we, – we have bagged on this college football playoff more times than I can count we about have, some of the – I mean, it's bagged about on some itself. Of these matchups. This year, I think they've hit a home run, man. I think this for these four teams are absolutely loaded, man. This is going to be fantastic. The other matchup uh, opposite LSU and Oklahoma is, surprise, surprise, the Clemson Tigers back in it. Yep. No big shock. Uh, this time they're taking on Ohio State. Uh, these two teams played a couple years ago in the playoff, out in the out in the Fiesta Bowl, same as they are this year. Uh, what what was the final score now? Thirty one to nothing. Thirty one. Thirty five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not even close. BG. I felt like Ohio State has been the best. Most complete team. They would be your one seed. They would be my one seed. They, and they, I think had LSU played in a different conference, if LSU did not win the SEC, I think Ohio State does stay at the one spot. But that SEC name, listen, it, it does carry some weight. Um, but I think Ohio State has been the best, most complete team all year. Justin Fields, the Georgia transfer, has thrown exactly one interception on the season. Uh, he has been fantastic. The only school in the history of football that had two Heisman finalists, one from the offensive side and one from the defensive side, BG, uh, I'm going to call it now, listen, man, the, the Clemson run thing, it is, this is not anywhere close to the same Ohio, te- Ohio State team that showed up in Arizona a couple years ago. That offensive, that team was offensively challenged. How they even got to that point, I don't know. I don't see a weakness on this Ohio State team. They got off to a slow start against Wisconsin. I get it. But outside of that slow start, find me another. They got off to a slow start, but look what they did right. in the second half. Right. Other than that small window, Again, find with me all another, the another pressure time in like the world that. on them. Yes. Find me another point anywhere in the season where you could say that about that football team. I, you can, I can't. Right. I can't. Uh, well, that said, I, I think that uh, this Ohio State and Clemson – uh, as good as I think uh, Oklahoma and LSU is going to be, I think this game is going to be another fantastic one. What, what do you think happens? I think Ohio State wins. Give I, me a score. I think Ohio State wins. I'm going to say. I'm going to say Ohio State wins 35-24. And see, I, I think they, I think they, you know, I think they might tack one on late, might stretch it out a little bit at the end. But look, Clemson all year long, I, I, I hate to keep beating that horse, but they went through the heavyweight pillow fight known as their ACC schedule. They have not seen any – they have not seen an offense as explosive and as good as Ohio State. They have not seen a running back as good as J.K. Dobbins, and they sure as heck have not seen a man on the defensive line as bad as Chase Young any point this season. Neither has anyone else in college football unless you played Ohio State. Um, I – Personally thought, I, I mean, it, it's become crazy. Uh, uh, maybe I should save this for our Festivus episode, but I'm just sick of the Heisman, man. Uh, Chase Young should have been your Heisman Trophy winner. And I, right. don't, I don't see how you can go watch his film and not realize that. Uh, I, I hope and pray that the Washington Redskins have a shot at him, but I don't, I don't think so because the last I saw, we're down to the fourth pick now. Um, but that being aside, man – you know that I will be as big of an Ohio State fan during this game as anybody can be while still actually hating them. <laughs> um, but I, I just – I think you're just gun-shy no, to, no to pick against Clemson. There's no question that I, in my head, Clemson has become like what Clubber Lang was to Rocky and Rocky Three to me. Like that, I, I am – 
so intimidated as a fan by what this team has done. And it, and what I mean by that is, like, we've heard this stuff before. And what I see is this awful perfect storm setting up again. You look at all the national awards over the weekend. Clemson got snubbed on everything. They're sitting at the three seed. It doesn't matter if it's not true. I can guarantee you that every player in that Clemson locker room is fully convinced right now that the whole country thinks they have no chance, that Ohio State's going to beat them 78 to nothing. Dabo's telling them, man, they're saying you guys won't score. Now, remember, you're not allowed to watch television here at Clemson. I give you the news, okay? But um, I, I, I just – I see the scores being the same thing, but I think Clemson Whoa. takes it, man. I think Clemson takes it. Oh, it's the this. same thing as my score. Yes. Oh, I thought you were saying the same as no, no, this. No, 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 a not years 78 ago. to nothing. I, thought I, you... think, I think Clemson wins um, semi comfortably. I think it's one of these situations where uh, the score looks pretty close, but there's never a time in this game, except maybe in the first quarter, uh, where you think Ohio State is going to threaten them. Um, this, this Clemson team, you're right about everything you said, but they're also insanely well-rested. Most of their starters have played the equivalent of like three fewer games than everybody else in this playoff because they haven't even been on the field in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, in a lot of these games. Um, again, I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong. Um, you know, and even I, if I and even if you're right, I wish I thought it mattered because of course Clemson I think I think they signed their ninth five star kid today. Oh yeah, uh, they, they, they snaked one away from North Carolina. It doesn't feel day, like it's going away anytime soon. It, if this thing gets into a tight ball game, right? I know it, what you're look, saying. Look, I get every look, I know what look, you're gonna say. Clemson played one tight ball game all year, and yeah, I can make the argument that they got you know, they, yeah, kind of tightened up a little well, bit. We talked at about the end it of the game. after that game Outs- that they did not seem right. to have the ability to ramp it up. But outside of that one game, like you've literally got to go back over a full calendar year to find another time because they steamrolled well, to the been Syracuse, wasn't it? I well, I said, did anybody give them a run after Syracuse? I don't. I meant the Syracuse so. game last season that well, that's, won. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, Did anybody yeah. give them a run after that? I don't think so. Uh, see, that's what I'm You're going back a, over a full calendar year, and they've had one tight ball game on the road with a team that is nowhere near as talented as they are. This thing's – listen, they're not going to walk off and leave Ohio State. That's not going to happen. In the fourth quarter – in this ball game, in a tight ball game, listen, I've just got more faith in that Ohio State defense than I do, uh, than I do claim. I listen. That's just it's my thing. My take. My opinion. I think. I think. Like I said, if you, if I say if I feel like they're the most, they've been the most complete team all year. There's no reason for me to back off of that. I now. agree with you. I mean, if that's how I felt, but uh, oh, Lord, I see this stuff in my sleep, man. Can we talk about something else? Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. So what we you, you got it? We got LSU winning, and you got Clemson. I got Ohio State. I think the official this prediction? right here would be the ideal national title game uh, in a lot of ways. But no, I think it's Clemson versus LSU. All right. So uh, he's got he's got uh, he's got the Tigers, and I think Clemson again. beats them too. Just for the record, it doesn't matter if they yeah. should. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. I God, I, I hope know. I'm wrong, but I'm telling you. I don't know. Let's move on to the NFL Please. side. Uh, BG, your guys. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean move on to NFL? That's not going to make me feel any better. What hey, a, look, I, no, I actually I have some positive things to say. I, look, I, yeah, I have you, some positive you, things you to guys, say. You uh, guys. Confused by the Redskin fans that were upset that we lost that game yesterday. I don't, I don't get that. Why would you want to win that game? You didn't. You, that was the perfect scenario. Dwayne Haskins goes out. He looks much better. The play calling looked much better. And then you lose. And well, you, and you, 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 why would you want to win that game? I mean, now, well, I'm mad because the Redskins covered the spread up until 30 seconds left in the game. And I'm thinking, man, I am handing Tan Man his butt over and over on these picks this weekend. And then Dwayne Haskins gets sacked. The Eagles run the fumble back for the touchdown on the last play of the game, breaking the spread open to 10 Man, well, 
Mess my whole I, week. Well, one, I don't remember what we had it locked in at when we made our picks, but two. Six and a half. Oh, okay. No, but two, you guys, uh, you know, you've said time and time again, at some point, you know, at the end of a season, yeah, you want to f- kind of feel good about yourself a little bit. Uh, I think we're kind of trending more towards that as Dwayne Haskins plays a little more. You know, he's looking a little better each week. Um, well, this was the first week that he even resembled an NFL quarterback, to be honest but, with you. I mean, like he, he, but he had a good stat block. I mean, he played a good game. He he played a good game, son. But and each, they still can't protect him but at each, all. Again, you know, each week, you know, because I mean, now, look, when you're at rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. Sure. Each, each week, he has looked a He's little bit better, better. No, no, a little better, yeah. a little better. Uh, and so I feel like we're kind of trending. You know, we had this discussion the other week about whether or not he would be the guy next year. I feel like we're kind of going in that direction. Like, ah, oh, he's, I think he's he probably going to be. The and guy. I was, I, you know, at the show that I never did last week, I was just going to talk about football. And that was one of the claims I was going to make is make the argument that if you look at this NFL draft and and the quarterbacks that are coming out and where the Redskins are positioned, I really think the the, the safe bet is to is to go with Dwayne Haskins. He's clearly got chemistry with your best wide receiver, who's also a rookie, who also played at Ohio State. Well, the, um, the answer here is to go is to keep Dwayne Haskins and take Chase Young, if you can, if you can get him. That's that's uh, there is no question. That's the answer to uh, is to a take. A few years Chase back, Young. it seemed like they were contracted to draft from Alabama. Now maybe we need to go. Get a few more Ohio State well, guys. Well, listen, if you load up with Alabama players and Ohio State players, you can do a whole hell of a lot worse. That's true. So, uh, on the Cowboys side, of course, you know, they got a – yeah, they reverted back to what we thought they would be at the beginning of the year, or at least uh, all the, the Cowboys well, fans the, thought what, they would be. What but the Cowboys what's do the, is they beat the bad really? teams. They beat bad teams. Well, this is the first team with a winning record I think they've beaten all year. A, a team with a winning record with an asterisk beside their name, right, because – this is a team with a winning record that had turned into a bad team. I mean, the Rams have looked awful well, no, no, the past no. few weeks. Uh, they, they did look awful. The last few weeks, they've been trending up. So, uh, a good win, but then. It, it, good was a, win. it was a good win. If you want to keep your coach, which I think we well, all exactly. do. There we are. We're back to this. Well, this oh, is what, win a playoff this game, is what the Cowboys, win this is what the Cowboys can look like. This team can beat anybody. And lo and behold, we're back on this mess again. Uh, but they fed the ball to Zeke Elliott uh, early and often in that one. It's a big win for the Cowboys. So around the NFL playoffs, I think Dallas is seeing it. What they the win. NFC's all messed up. They now. win. San Dallas. Francisco dropped from the one seed all the way down to five. Now you've yeah. got the Seahawks up in the one seed. So now the Seahawks are not going to come to Dallas. It's probably going to be the 49ers. Merry Christmas. Say six and one half dozen in the yeah, other. Yeah, good point. Uh, I think if the Cowboys win Sunday, that's a wrap. Uh, if they lose Sunday, there's still hope for Dallas. Uh, maybe slide in there at eight and eight. Uh, the Packers on the NFC. Listen, no still one's, not a team I know a dad can Listen, about. no one's really talked about the Packers. No, they have. All they do is just keep stacking they win, win. They win, win upon games. win. Uh, they're a game up on Minnesota right now in a very competitive North. So both of those teams look like they are headed to the playoffs. Uh, so it feels like, look, the NFC playoff picture is starting to take shape now. Looks like the Dallas Philadelphia spots really. The only thing up in the air. On the AFC side, uh, this one is a lot more interesting. Uh, Baltimore's kind of putting a stranglehold with two games left and holding yeah. the tiebreaker on New England. I'm not sure if that's official yet, but it's pretty close. They're going to be the one seed, it looks like. Uh, and after that, uh, you've got Kansas City coming on. They own a tiebreaker over New England. They're a game Another behind. team no one's talking about. All right, People yeah. have forgotten about Pat Mahomes. And well, hey, I, well, Pat Mahomes I, got banged up early on in the year, yeah, missed and, a few and, weeks, and, and then they kind of fell off everybody's radar. But but I, I'm telling you right now, I would die on this hill alone if necessary. I still think functionally playing right now, he's the quarterback I would want over anybody else. Despite how Lamar Jackson is playing – I don't think Lamar Jackson's going to fade this year at all. And I'm certainly not trying to disrespect the guy, but if you don't think that someone's going to figure this stuff out, I mean, how many times? Look. You would take Pat Mahomes over Russell Wilson? At their current ages, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. I I think Pat Mahomes has a more talented arm than Russell Wilson. Uh, The thing that's always stuck out to me about Mahomes is... I'm not not necessarily disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, just throwing a... I think as Pat Mahomes ages, he's going to develop into the quarterback that a lot of us wanted Cam Newton to become. 
Uh, he's go- he he can stand in the pocket and throw the football. Um, and the thing, have you noticed this? How, many, how much Ravens football have you watched this year? I've watched a little bit. Have you noticed? And I'm, again, it, 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 I was the I was the guy on this show who told you. Watch out for this kid. The day, the day, the week after we did the draft, you said, "Who? You know, we we had on our little lineup. Pick one guy that you think has the ability to shock the world that nobody sees coming." That's who I went with, Lamar Jackson. All right, but he is throwing to guys that are wide, flipping open. Man, it's like something's coming off that sideline that no one can do. Well, well, and I what... think it's they're so terrified of him. That they're really not covering people. They're like trying to keep everything in front of them. And what's he doing? He's hitting pass routes in front of them. Well, that's what we said, you know, whatever it was, a month or so ago when when the Lamar for MVP stuff really started taking on some yeah. steam, right? And we we're like, look, I get it. You know, he's 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 probably gonna be the MVP of the oh, league he this year. Be. He, he probably should, should be. be. But do it again next year. That's you know, the thing. Do it. Do it again. And I and I don't say that to to demean or knock Lamar Jackson in any way. But the let's the go kid back has and been look at fantastic. A whole line of these guys, right? Okay, so we'll start with RG three. And that's what I was saying. History then, has then, not been kind to to this type of player. Does anybody remember what Deshaun Watson looked like as a as a rookie before he got hurt? Now is Deshaun Watson still a hell of an NFL quarterback? Yes, but he doesn't look like. You know, a, a, a god among men out there anymore. He looks like a good NFL quarterback. This is going to take a step back. Now, let me say this, and I probably wouldn't have said this before the season started, but but so just I'm not trying to act like I've got some grand insight here, but but John Harbaugh is the best coach in the NFL right now. I mean, if you look at his track record, this guy has done it, and he's done it with very different. Um, mindsets. He, he kind of reminds me of, of Joe Gibbs from the 80s who had very different quarterbacks and very different offenses and very different defenses and still kept going back to the Super Bowl. So if if Harbaugh can win a Super Bowl um, with this bunch, and and they really might. They, because, they might. Because I'm telling you, whenever this gets figured out, it ain't going to be this year. It is not going to be this year. I think this Ravens offense is going to keep clicking like this. But Harbaugh, I mean, he's the Harbaugh nobody talks about, but it's just because he's quiet. A special teams coach comes out of nowhere. How long has he been the head coach? Do you remember the team he took over? Can you remember the Ravens back that far? Coming off of Brian Billick and some of those absolutely god-awful teams in the late uh, – or the mid-2000s. I mean, it, it, John Harbaugh took over – an awful, awful football club, and has turned them into to a pretty consistent winner. And this year, suddenly, John, dominant. John Harbaugh is a good coach. I think John Harbaugh is someone who stumbled backwards into his current situation. Is well, that, a lot of well, uh, he, you he would was, know. He 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 was on the verge. Fourth of, round pick. He was on the verge. Dak Prescott. We planned it the whole time. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, we all had right. our eye on Tony Romo right. as okay. an undrafted free all agent right. all those years ago. All right. But John Harbaugh was a guy who had Joe Flacco and stuck with Joe Flacco for years and was on the way out the door. They were getting and I'll give I'll give credit to him in this. Whatever you were doing with Joe Flacco is the complete opposite, to say the least, of what you have in Lamar Jackson. Well, what you and get- he was he was he had the cojones enough to go, okay, I'm on the way out the door. We're going to try this. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I'm going to move but, on. But, but if what, it does work, then we hit the goal. But what he made the call to do was to give the keys to his offensive coordinator and say, plan this entire freaking thing around what this kid can do. Well, yeah, if you've got this kid, you that's what you have to do. You couldn't. They couldn't put but, him in right and then kind of handcuff him. You might think him. that sounds obvious sitting out there listening, but – I think the two guys in this room can tell you two teams that wouldn't have done that. I know we wouldn't. Well, look what we did with Dak Prescott for three years. Right. You know, look what you guys did with Dwayne Haskins, you know, for the first three months that you had him. Look at what we did with RG3. Exactly. You never really gave him an opportunity. But, uh, you know, back to the playoff picture, uh, here's an interesting one. The Patriots, uh, I'm guessing they would be the two seed right now. They've got a big game Saturday with Buffalo, who is suddenly – you know, it is said in league. Foxborough. It's in Foxborough, but suddenly that's the team that literally no you. one has talked about in their 10-4. and four. 
They've still got an inside. They've still got a path now we, well, the, the, to the, winning the division. Could you imagine them winning the winning Saturday, winning the East, and sending the Patriots the, to on the road in the wild card round, BG? The, the take on the Bills all year has been that they've beaten up on bad teams. And, and you know, that big matchup in Buffalo, what, about a month and a half ago where they lost to the Pats. But, you know, kind of – Sort of like we were talking about with LSU, right? If they had lost to Alabama. That's what people have done with Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Buffalo is sort of the the LSU of that division, except they beat – or except they lost to Alabama. They lost to the Pats. So, yes, you're right, man. But this is not the same Patriot team. No. That we – No. This offense looks bad. I mean, their defense is still winning them football games. But, Lord have mercy – I, I I don't think this feels the same as when we thought the Patriots had their backs against the wall before. They feel like they're on the ropes. It feels like we are watching the end of this from one week to the next. Um, the New England this is Patriots gonna sound crazy. will not be in the Super Bowl this year. They're yeah, not this, winning this the This sounds AFC. crazy. I, I think Buffalo might go up there and beat the mess out of New England. I think Buffalo's defense might go up there and absolutely stonewall this offense. Um, the question is, um, can Josh Allen play up to that moment? Because I promise you Buffalo's defense is going to show up. They're the real deal. They're, they're, they're just right under what we thought the Bears were going to be this year. But, but the Bears are a good example of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. If, if Allen goes up there and does not play a great game, in that atmosphere, um, New England will find a way to win a, a mud wrestle match. Listen, I think it was a pretty low-scoring game when they played early on, yeah, 14-10, maybe, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm picturing something like that again on Saturday uh, up in New England. Um, but I'm with you, man. I, I It wouldn't shock me if Buffalo won. Uh, I'd love to see it. Tom Brady at home, that Patriots defense. So I'm part of you is kind of going to lean towards that. But listen, make no mistake, the Buffalo Bills are coming in that AFC East. Does, they are on the way. Oh, no question. Does part of the football fan and you want to see Brady at the end of the game one more time just be like, I'm still the man. You people think I'm going to die, but I'm not going to die. Like, I mean, this part of you want to just see the Patriots, like, skull drag Buffalo and still be standing at the top of the heap, still like the biggest villain in the history of professional sports. I mean, part of me wants to see that, yes. but part of me is tired of it. Yes, but if I thought that that was going to be – if I thought that was the end of the show, that was the end of the movie, right. I'd be all for that. But – we both know it wouldn't be. They would just, and as if as long as they kept doing that, then Tom Brady would play till he was fifty or sixty years old. Right? At some point, the only way that this is going to end is somebody's going to have to just knock them the fudge out, right? Otherwise, he's just going to keep going. They're going to keep going. Belichick's going to keep going. They're going to keep videotaping sidelines of one in fourteen teams. I mean, it, it would never stop. So no, I I don't want to see it. I want to see it over with. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see some new blood. I want to see the Chiefs, the Ravens, or something like that in there, man. Oh, absolutely. I want to, yeah, but it just... What are, what are we at now? Three straight Super Bowls? Yeah. Like nine out of 12 or something crazy like that? Like I said, the, this time, insane, I mean, obviously man. people have forecast when Kansas City went up to New England in 2017 and opened the season by shellacking the Patriots. And every year when they lose, when they lost like Garrett Blunt, we said it. When the Chiefs beat him, we said it. When Mahomes took off his rookie year, we said it. We, we were wrong this every feels, single. This, this feels, feels different, different, man. It feels different because the, everyone always they they always lost that game early, right? Like week three, or week four. You know, the Lions would pound them or something, and everybody go, "Oh, is this the end of the Patriots?" Day? And then they'd roll off like nine straight wins. Well, they'd be at home in the playoffs, and this has a different feel. I like, remember a show I we don't did. Know, man. Maybe a year and a half ago, it seems like it might have been late in the summer, right before the season started, and we were talking about New England. And I remember saying, "I don't know if this will be the year that Brady drops off." But if you go back and look, and I remember talking about this on the show, when you look at quarterbacks that have dropped off in the past, they don't typically drop off gradually. When Peyton Manning went off the cliff, he went off the cliff. He he didn't look like he could complete forward passes anymore when he walked off that field uh, in Super Bowl was it fifty after beating. Beating the Panthers, 
And so well, that, it feels like that's what we're starting well, but to look the at now. And it doesn't feel like Brady is going to walk away from the game any other way. Well, He's not going to pull a John Elway. He could have done that. He's had that opportunity. He can't leave on his own. He is going to have to be shown by reality that you don't belong on this field anymore. Well, so we're going to see that. That's all I'm arguing. Yeah. We, are, we are going to see a day and time. Um, you're way too young to remember what Terry Bradshaw looked like in about 1982. I wasn't but I'm born not. yet. I'm not. And I remember watching those late era Steelers games when they might have been the worst team in the league. Um, and, and it's not what you want to see. But that's what we're going to see with Tom Brady. Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't go that far out. I, I don't think he can quit. I, no, no, I don't, I'm with you. I don't think he can just walk away, but I think that there is a definite – they're not going to be but so bad with Tom Brady. Yeah, I don't care how old he is. They're, not, they're only going to drop so Depending far. Depending on how stubborn Brady is, I don't think I it's impossible we see him at another team well, well, before it's all said and done. It's hard to picture. But, but again, Joe Montana, it was impossible to picture. Well, but it happened. Yeah, but they, you know, they Brad also. Favre. They also. It happened. Well, okay. Kansas City, uh, those teams, uh, San Francisco had someone behind Joe Montana. Right. The Packers had someone behind Brett Favre. The Patriots had the next guy. And they don't have. They gave him I away. They still had Garoppolo and Brissett up there. They don't. No. Those they, guys are somewhere They else gave there. that guy away. I, I, I don't know, man. I I feel like, like I said, the floor for New England is much higher than what you're picturing because you're right. Peyton Manning looked like he couldn't complete a pass. That defense carried him to a Super Bowl. Tom Brady looks better than Peyton Manning did by the end of that season. He does. No, no, no. I'm not arguing that. I think you're misunderstanding me. What I'm saying is because Brady does not have that part of his brain that's going to tell him in the offseason, whether it's this year, next year, whenever, that's it, dude. He's going to keep coming back for more. I'm saying that before the end, we are going to see Tom Brady look completely ineffectual in a football game. Maybe more yeah. than once. Nah, I, don't I think, so. think so. I think I think Giselle will give him a little tap on the shoulder because that. Listen, it, this is not about Tom Brady when Tom wants to retire. It's when Giselle has enough of this, right? And she's the one. She's the one I calling. Mean, I don't, when she gets out of bed, she wakes up. As much as if she, she wakes up tomorrow know. and says, "All right, that's it. We're done with this football thing." Tom's going to go. Okay, I feel like, I okay. Mean, we're not gonna that come I, on not that either one of us know anything about that. I'm not even sure why you brought it up, but since you did. Um, I just pretty much said that stuff before. What I, yeah, but that's what he says. What I'm telling you is that I feel like if that was the case, that would have already happened. Ah, anyway, she can't want to see her 44-year-old, 43-year-old husband out there getting hit the way he's getting hit right now. Yeah. I mean, she can't want to see that. Ah, like I said, the AFC playoff picture is you know, a little Tom more Brady's interesting. Tom probably really annoying. Maybe she doesn't want him home. No, I feel like he's a pretty cool guy. You, you feel like that, but you're pretty annoying. Nah. So you wouldn't know. Nah. I'm, I'm a pretty cool laid back guy. Like I said before there, like I don't have a lot of things I'm real like friends. serious about, right? Exactly. I don't have a lot of things that I feel that strongly about. You think that you think that apple pie is better than cherry pie. That right there that's, off the bat is That's not even it's open a, for debate. Though, it's absurd. Man. Anyway. Cherry pie is delicious. I'll eat them both. I, I didn't say it wasn't, I just said it's not apple pie. Custard pie is better than both of them. Man, I should fire your ass right now. Uh, fire me from what? Fire you from the podcast. Maybe your ratings that, would go up. For even having that thought. Uh, BG, one uh, coaching name out there that has gotten the world all the buzz. Urban Meyer, he's been linked to the Cowboys job. He's sitting up in a Redskins box on Sunday afternoon. Number one, I guess I'm asking, does Urban Meyer coaching in the NFL next season and two, if so, is it a two-horse race between the Cowboys and Redskins? I think it's a two-horse race. I, I I don't think that the Redskins are going to do what it would be necessary to get him because did you see who he was sitting beside? He was sitting beside Snyder, right? He, he was in Snyder's he, box. He was, yeah, but he was sitting beside Alex Smith on one side, who some people think is 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 uh, the new GM. Okay, uh, and then but on the other side of him is Bruce Allen's flipping brother, man. 
If you're getting ready to get rid of Bruce Allen, his brother's not in your box. I mean, I I think I think Urban Meyer was there to watch two of his favorite former players play, and I think that might be the extent of it right now. Do I think that Dan Snyder's looking at him? Yeah. Yeah. Do I think they've talked about it? Yeah. Um, but he's only publicly commented about one job, and that's you. Guys. Well, do you think that this might have been a little shot over to Jerry oh, Jones sure. to be like, hey, you know, look, uh, I'm on the market. I'm available. If you guys kind of tinker around a little bit, listen, somebody else might snatch me off the market. It might be, you know, it might be your arch rival here. Is that kind of putting the screws to Jerry a little bit? Um, Meanwhile, he's watching Jason Garrett turn the team Sunday into exactly what it should have been all along, which scares the bejesus out of me. Right. But anyway, that's a that's a different story. And I don't think you can remove the con- the the context too of of what our owner was watching was uh, was thirty thousand Eagles fans and nobody else in his cavernous ninety seven thousand. That's way it's stadium. been. That's way it's been for for. Two seasons now, is it not? I think that, well, this is worse than last season um, because this isn't disinterest at this point. This is hostility. This is openly the Redskins fan base saying, we've had the reputation for being the most loyal NFL fans in history. Forget you. Until you do something. And I, I really do think that, that, um, that he's taken notice. But – I'll be honest with you, man. I think every Redskins fan out there, even if they hired Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer only thinks he's a big enough name to overcome what Bruce Allen can do in that program. He's not. Well, I, th- I thought we—I thought not. we were trending toward firing Bruce Allen. I, I thought what that I'm was the saying, thing. What I'm saying is, until that happens, I really don't think anything else matters. All right, well, let's. Well, we'll say for discussion's sake that, that Bruce Allen is, is on the way out. All right. But, but what this, I'm saying is I think that would be a condition for Urban Meyer. All right, all I think right. you've heard that from lots of coaches that I'm not coming up there if I'm not going to be the guy. Well, no, listen, no, no head coach that is not just dying to get his foot in the door is going to take that job. Right? If you want to go get somebody like an Urban, somebody with that kind of reputation, you know, they're going to have some say so in who's in that front office. So let's say. For the last couple minutes of the show, Bruce Allen's out. All right, this, this is going to be it for him. They go to hire Urban Meyer. Does that excite you as a Redskins fan? Sure. Well, I mean, why wouldn't it? Because Urban Meyer, everything I can't stand about that guy doesn't bother me much in the NFL setting. Yeah. I, I would not want to see him at South Carolina because I think that's a whole different prospect. But See, I, I'm not cra- I wouldn't be that crazy about hiring him. But you guys have had some success. Well, yeah, but I, I'm saying – he comes with a lot of baggage, and a lot of it, like you said, it, when you translate it to the NFL, his baggage doesn't doesn't, matter doesn't really much. matter that much. I'm just saying, I feel like if he comes, he's not going. I mean, where where has he gone? Where he's been more than a handful of years? And I feel like in four years, you're going to be right back on the head coaching market, whether you are successful or not. And to me, I just I, I don't want any part of that. Yeah. I think I think as a Washington fan right now, anything that moves the needle is better than than what you've got. And I'm, again, I'm coupling it with the fact that he would have Dwayne Haskins, um, which yeah. may have something to do with him going there if he does. Yeah, no, I think it's You're a less big, concerned it's a big about part of Haskins it. having to learn some crazy offense, you know, that that isn't even. No, see, I think that's what a big does. part of it. That, you know, he was there at Ohio State with Haskins. When Haskins was was one of the you know best players in college football, I think that would be huge for that kid. I also uh, think I think Eric, that's I think that's the right place. I think that's the job he should really be zoning in on, not the Cowboys' job. I think it's Washington. To me, that's the perfect fit for him. And, and he's uh, making and, that NFL. And, and a lot of uh, the other name you see uh, mentioned a lot is Eric Bieniemy, um, who I also think would be a really good hire. But again, that all has to be coupled with a new front office. Yeah. I it has to be. I agree. All right, guys, listen, that's it for this week. BG and I, we're going to be off for a couple weeks. We're going to uh, record our Festivus show here shortly. Uh, that will be available for download uh, on the 23rd on Festivus. Uh, so we hope you guys have a fantastic holiday. Merry Christmas. And uh, we will see you when we get back in a couple weeks. <laughs>